loving and gracious God. Worry, fear, pain, and loss cloud our vision and veil our sight, which causes us to miss the truth of your word. As we gather this morning, we pray that your power will restore our vision and lift our burdens so that we might experience the hope and freedom of your life in us. Remind us again as we gather at your table that despite our diversity through you, we are one people. Christ's sacrifice for us connects us. It is through the bread and the wine that we are able to partake of the great thanksgiving of our faith. For we offer this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to worship at First Baptist Church. Today is the second Sunday after Epiphany. This morning, First Baptist will share in the observance of Holy Communion. If you are our guest in worship this morning, we invite you to fill out the form in the back of your worship folder. You may fill it out and place it in the basket in the narthex, or you may scan the QR code and fill out the form electronically. Your filling out this form is your gift to us and provides us an opportunity to say thank you for your participation in worship this morning. As you enter the sanctuary, you were encouraged to pick up a communion cup from the basket in the narthex. As a reminder, there are gluten-free options available. For those worshiping at home, you may feel free to pause the worship service and gather elements that you would like for communion later on in the worship service. Uh, as a reminder, First Baptist practices open communion. Therefore, if you are his, the cup and the bread are for you. Whether you're present in the sanctuary or worshiping at home, we welcome you to this sacred and holy time. It is our hope and desire that you sense the presence of God as, you, as we worship together as a community of faith. We welcome our children this morning and invite them to come to the front and find a blue dot on the floor and spend a few moments with me. Good morning, everybody. It is so good to see everybody today. I have something in my box this morning that is very, very special to me. It is special to me because it is a gift from my mom, and I thought it would be appropriate for me to bring it today and share it with you. You want to see what it is? Okay, here we go. I know you're going to be so excited about this. Oh, look at that. Boy, isn't that a big, thick book? That's a big book. Actually, it is a photo album book. And inside this book are pictures of my great-great-grandparents, my grandparents, my mom and dad, and there may be even a picture in here of me and my sister. So what does that have to do with today? Well, you see, these pictures in this book are a reminder to me of how much my family loves me. And it's a reminder to me that there's a picture of my grandmother when she was a little girl. There she is right here. And here is a picture of my grandfather. Doesn't he look dashing in that suit? Huh? That's his Sunday morning suit. Doesn't he look dashing? And here is a picture of my grandfather and his two brothers. Mac and Jean, and my grandfather's name was Hal Hale. And here is a picture of them, my, my grandfather and my grandmother. And that's a picture of my mom as a little girl. There she is right here. And what about this picture, huh? Doesn't that guy right there look handsome? That's a picture of my dad. And here is a picture of my dad. And look at that little rocky horse. And who do you think is on that little rocky horse? That's a picture of me. And what about my sister? Here's a picture of my sister. Huh? 
You think she would like for me to show you this picture of her? Probably not. That's a picture of my family. And as I look at these pictures, I'm reminded of my family and how much they love me, reminded me of times that we were together as a family and all the fun things that we did as a family. You know, the same is true for God. See, God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to be a part of our family. And unfortunately, when Jesus was growing up and when Jesus was doing his ministry, they did not have cameras. They weren't able to take a selfie. Can you see Jesus uh, taking a selfie with all of his disciples? Huh? Wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that be funny? They didn't have that. So what Jesus said was, just like I remember my family when I see these pictures, Jesus took two elements. He took bread from the table, and then he took cup from the table, and then he told his disciples, every time you come to the supper table or the lunch table or even breakfast, every time you're at a table and you pick up the bread and you pick up the cup, I want you to remember me. I want you to remember that the bread represents my body and the cup is, represents the blood that I'm going to shed and be broken for you when I'm crucified. So remember me every time you come to the table. I remember my family and the love that they have for me when I look at these pictures. But when I come to communion like we have today, I am reminded of how much God loves me and how much God loves you. So let's pray today in thanking God for these two simple elements that we can remember God and Jesus. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for simple things like a cup and bread that they can remind us of the love that you have for us. Even on this day, as we take communion, let us be mindful of how much you love us. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you for being with me today. Our Old Testament lesson this week comes from Psalms 90, verse 1 through 4. It can be found in your pew Bible on page 510. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you were God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, you mortals, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Dear Abba Father, thank you for hearing our prayer. We thank, thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us all. Bless our offerings this day for your work to be done shared through our church and its ministries. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
The white rose on the communion table is in memory of Tom Chandler, Maurice Corbett, and Jesse Bolden. In their honor and memory, we will sing the first two verses of We've Seen a Rose. You'll find this printed in your order of worship or on your computer screen at home. We invite you to put your masks on and sing together. Today we want to remember, of course, the families of Tom Chandler, Maurice Corbett, and Jesse Bolden, uh, but we also want to continue to remember Lisey Colvin as she continues to recover at Wesley Commons Rehab. And now if you'll please pray with me. Lord of heaven and earth, we come to you today in a world that is cold. Cold as in the literal absence of heat the cold that brings us snowfall and crunchy grass and ice on our windshields. But we also experience a world that is cold in other ways, the cold that leaves the hungry unfed, the thirsty left without drink, the stranger uninvited, the naked unclothed, and the sick unvisited. The cold is in the absence of God. And yet, as we huddle close together to find warmth to drive out the temperature, let us also work together to make the presence of God known in this world. Each of us in ourselves has the ability to provide warmth in a cold world. Help us to know that about ourselves and others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our and as I speak of the cold and the needy, I especially want to say a prayer for those who are unhoused. There is no good time to find yourself in that situation but especially in times of below freezing nights with cold, hard, and sometimes wet grounds. May these children of yours feel your presence, O God, even if only in the form of temporary shelter to get out of the cold for the night. Let your presence be as a warm blanket and a hot meal for those that need it most. Lord, in your mercy. And even as mornings like this one can sometimes make us feel like there is no warmth to be had, and even as moments in our lives can make us feel as though we will never be close to you, we remember that winter turns to spring, and your presence is eternal whether we realize it or not. May we remember this in our darkest hours, and may we be living testaments to the eternal nature of your presence, O God. Lord, in your mercy, and now, let us take a moment to offer up in silence the individual needs of this community. Lord, in your mercy. And now, we pray in unison the way your son taught us to pray long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Would you please open a Bible to John 14, where we are going to find our New Testament lesson this morning. If you're using one of our pew Bibles, the text may be found on page 95 
of the New Testament portion. We read this morning words which Jesus spoke to His disciples on the night of the Last Supper. John 14, beginning in verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate, or another comforter, to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him or knows Him. You know Him, because He abides with you, and He will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And on that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. This is the word of God for our time and our lives. Thanks be to God.
wine or meal, a holy feast. And still they argued, greatest least, act of service and love. Do this in memory of bread was blessed and broken and shed. Taste and see. Taste and see. You are all now honorary members of the First Baptist Church Chancel Choir. They sounded good, didn't they, Keith? Yes. A little Baptist boy and a little Catholic boy became friends at school and they decided to visit each other's churches. The first weekend they went to Mass and everything the priest did, genuflecting, reading the liturgy, blessing the congregation, at each point, the little Baptist boy would say, what does that mean? And the little Catholic boy would explain it to him. The next weekend, they went to the Baptist church. And everything the ministers did, call to worship, invocation, announcing the hymns, at each point, the little Catholic boy would say, what does that mean? And the little Baptist boy would explain it to him. When it was time for the sermon, the preacher took off his wristwatch and laid it on the pulpit in front of him. And the little Catholic boy said, what does that mean? And the little Baptist boy said, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Unlike that preacher, I want this morning to focus on time. Not necessarily how much time I'm going to be in the pulpit though I know you would be happy for me to focus on that. But I really want all of us to focus on time as a concept, or more than that, time as a reality in history and in our lives. Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from John 14, a chapter which begins with words which are well-known and well-loved. Don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Where my Father dwells, there are many homes. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. Like all of the words of Jesus, these words teach us something about God's love. In Jesus Christ, God says to us, I love you so much that I want you with me. So I am going to make you an eternal home. But it's not just in the New Testament that we find this language of eternity. In our Old Testament lesson, the psalmist says, Lord, you have been our refuge. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever the earth and the world were made, you are God from everlasting to everlasting. We use this language pretty casually in the church but stop for a moment and try to grasp everlasting, eternal, eternity. On my first sabbatical, Carol and I visited Greece and we saw human artifacts from 4000 BCE. And I remember trying to grasp, here are farming implements and eating utensils that somebody made and used 6,000 years ago. Even that stretched my comprehension. But eternity? An infinity of time? 
family was riding home from church and the little boy said, Daddy, what's the biggest number there is? The father knew that his son wouldn't understand the concept of infinity. So he said, well, what's the biggest number you've ever counted to? The little boy said, 1,792. Curious about such a specific number, the father said, why did you stop there? The little boy said, the sermon was over. <laughs> Our finite minds cannot comprehend infinity. We cannot truly grasp eternity, so we confess by faith that God is eternal and God's love is eternal. So on the one hand, eternity is too much for us on a cognitive level, but on the other hand, sometimes eternity is not enough for us on an emotional level. There are many situations as we live life in this world, especially times of fear or grief or pain, when we are not interested in eternity. What we want to know about is right now. When they spoke those terrible words to my mother, you have a brain tumor. We cannot operate. It's cancer. I didn't want to wait till eternity. I wanted God to be with her and with me right now. I have sat with many of you. As you have watched your loved one hurting, or even dying? And the question is not, where will God be in eternity? The question is, where is God right now? Because I'm hurting, and I'm confused, and I'm afraid right now. Experience, living life, teaches us that eternity is not enough for us. Remarkably, our New Testament lesson says it's not enough for God either. Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned. I will not leave you alone, but I am coming to you. I couldn't stand it if you were alone even for a moment, Jesus says. So I am going to come and make my home in you right now. In Jesus Christ, God says to us, I love you and I want to be with you right now. Did you get to see any fireworks on New Year's Eve? We did not see as much as we heard fireworks for several hours in my neighborhood. When I was pastoring in Edgefield, my family and two other church families went to see the 4th of July fireworks show at the Savannah River where it separates Augusta from North Augusta. Behind us was a group of about a dozen people. From their conversation, I could tell that it was two adult brothers and their families. Immediately behind me was a man who looked to be in his late 20s or early 30s, not much younger than I at that time. Sitting in his lap was his daughter, I'd say three years old, beautiful little black girl with her hair in braids, a barrette at the end of each braid. We waited for more than an hour for the fireworks to begin. But when they did, their loudness and brightness frightened this little girl. And she said, almost crying, I want to go home. 
The father said, now who's always with you? And I really thought she was going to say, Daddy. But she said, Jesus. Her father said, all right then. There was a few moments of silence as the father let sink in what he had taught his daughter, obviously, about what it means for Jesus to be with us and the difference that makes. And then he said, how about it? Slowly and thoughtfully, the little girl said, it's all right, we can stay. I love that story. But that's not the whole story. When the father said, who's always with you? And that little girl said, Jesus. I said rather loudly, there you go. I didn't mean for it to come out out loud. It just did. But now this man knew that those strangers, he and I, were brothers in Christ. We all sat through the fireworks show, ooing and aahing. And when it was time to leave, he turned to walk away, but then he stopped. And he came back to acknowledge this connection that we had in Christ. And referring to the fireworks, he said, And if we think that's something, just wait till the Lord comes. Like eternity, the coming of the Lord is something that we can think about and talk about in our adult comprehension. But that little girl wasn't interested in the coming of the Lord or eternity or anything else other than her fear in that moment. I understand that. Because when I'm afraid, when I don't know what to do, when I or someone I love is in pain, I want someone to help right now. Jesus said, as you live in this world of pain and confusion and fear, Remember that you are not alone because I am with you and in you right now. On the night that our Lord Jesus was betrayed, He took the bread and blessed it, and broke it, and He said to His disciples, This is My body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same way, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is given for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink from it, do so in remembrance of me. Would you pray with me? We can scarcely comprehend, O oh Christ, what it means for you to have left your eternal throne, to come and be part of our world and part of our lives, 
and even part of our struggles and our sorrows and our fear. Even though we do not fully understand it, we are so very grateful. Confusion and pain and fear can make us numb. And that numbness can keep us from feeling your presence. So help us to feel, we pray. And even when we cannot feel, help us to trust right now. Amen. God's Word is always invitation to the people of God. And if God has been at work in your life, in this service, or in these days, in a way that you would like to talk or pray with one of our ministry team, we would love to have that opportunity. For now, it's time for our hymn of commitment. And I invite you to sing or pray in a way that will strengthen your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. As Keith Jameson comes to lead us in singing hymn number 456. And now in the name of God, the Creator, who has given us life, in the name of Jesus Christ, God's Son, who has redeemed us by the cross, in the name of God's Holy Spirit, who is with us each moment of each day, even right now, go from this place to be God's people and to do God's work. Amen.